good morning and welcome once again as we have this opportunity to worship together as God's people here at St. John's. We are in the ninth weekend, ninth Sunday of Pentecost. So once again, we are in the midst of that season that is ongoing, the season of the Holy Spirit as we live out our sanctified lives as redeemed children of God in Christ Jesus. Before we get started, I want to remind you that you can uh, download on our website a copy of the service if you'd like to run it off on your printer if you are able to do that uh, you can follow along there will be responsive uh, uh, readings there will be responses by you um, as you worship or you can just simply allow me to do that on your behalf as well but as you go to our website and i would encourage you to do so stjohnsgrandhaven.com all one word um, you will also find out information that is important regarding vacation bible school we are still going to have Vacation Bible School here at St. John's this week. So from August 5th to the 7th, we're doing it virtually. Uh, so we'll have a virtual VBS and you can find that on our website on the front page. You just kind of look to the bottom and you can click on that and it's not too late to register. In fact, this is a great opportunity for outreach. So encourage those around you, uh, whether they're members of St. John's or not, whether they have any connection with Jesus or not, encourage them to actually check that out and give it a try. It's really easy to use and it's a great way for people to hear about the love of our Savior Jesus. Also, uh, while you're checking that out, right next to that, uh, that opportunity to click on the VBS information, you will see information on Scrip. Scrip is an opportunity to order gift cards, and the way we're doing it here at St. John's during this whole COVID pandemic is we are having you either call in your orders to our office or you can order online. And that's what you'll see on that website, an opportunity to submit your request for what you'd like to order as far as gift cards. This is a great way to support the ministry of our school as the proceeds go to the school. But yet for you, it's uh, whatever you want, whatever dollar amount, you get that in a gift card uh, to whatever store you choose to shop at. And then we'll have a pickup time here as well. So if you put those orders in by Friday at 5 p.m., you can pick up your gift cards on the following Thursday from 6 to 7 here at our church in a drive through fashion at our carport. So it keeps it safe, it keeps it uh, ongoing, and we still have that opportunity then to support our ministry. So again, check that out as well, as well as so many other things. We have Bible studies, um, also our daily devotions, you name it. Um, but at this time, what we'll do as God's people is we'll get started now as we begin our worship service by reflecting on our baptism into Christ Jesus, where he claimed us as his own. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Now since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we will this weekend here at St. John's in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Together we pray. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Well, Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, still you provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, 
give thanks for all your benefit and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> our first reading, our Old Testament reading for today, is taken from the prophet Isaiah, the 55th chapter, beginning at verse 1. <clears throat> come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make you with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> our second reading is our epistle lesson for today from Paul's letter to the Romans, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 1. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is, it is not as though the word of God has failed, for not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said. About this time next year, I will return and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but also when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had, not, and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that God's purpose of election might continue, not because of works, but because of his call. She was told, the older will serve the younger, as it is written. Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to stand, if you're able, wherever you are right now, for the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the death of John, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, <clears throat> and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over, and those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you, of course, may be seated. <clears throat> well, God's grace, mercy, and a special measure of peace to all of you from the one who is the bread of life, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, before I really get going in this message for today, I've got to be honest about something. I feel like this is a message that I have already preached to you before. 
And I think there's probably good reason for this. In fact, there is. You see, I actually wrote this sermon, or the bulk of this sermon, three years ago. That's right, three years ago this week, after having gone through all the sermon prep, all the writing process based on our gospel reading from Matthew, after having gone through the final editing process and the process of practicing and making sure I knew the sermon, I was all set to deliver this message on the very first weekend in August of 2017. And then the plans changed. You see, having only lived in the Grand Haven area for four months at that time, I clearly had no idea what this whole Coast Guard Festival stuff was all about. Now, I had heard about some of the things. I had heard about the parade that we have at this time of the year, the fireworks that are amazing, but I really did not have a full understanding of what this was really all about when it came to all the events that would take place throughout the course of this week, including the arrival, the parade of all those ships, those Coast Guard boats that would come in from Lake Michigan. Yeah, in my ignorance, and that's what it was, I simply just planned for a weekend like any other normal weekend until my wife and I finally took time to head downtown to see what this week that we are unfortunately not able to take place, take part in this year was really all about. That's when this sermon was suddenly set aside and a new sermon was written based on a text that then had all to do with what it means for God's people to live and serve as a rescue ship rather than a cruise ship. If only my wife and I had headed downtown a little sooner, right? If only we would have paid a little closer attention to all that was being planned, everything that was going on around us, maybe I wouldn't have had to write two sermons that week. And maybe, just maybe, we would have had an opportunity to meet more people, to enjoy our new hometown's festivities. In fact, maybe we would have had an opportunity to develop a lot more relationships with a lot more people much more quickly. Because I have to tell you, among the many things that I love about being a pastor are the relationships that are developed over time. It's really true. I, I love getting to know people. I've loved getting to know you, those of you who are members here. I love getting to hear their stories, your stories. I enjoy hearing, for example, how couples get together, how they met, how God brought them together. I love hearing about how God then led individuals and their families to a place like Grand Haven, Michigan. And I love hearing how God works in the lives of his people, even after some of the most difficult and challenging circumstances. Of course, as a part of this ongoing and growing relationship that we have here at St. John's, uh, you get to hear a lot about me then, too. I mean, you're learning, if you haven't already figured that out, that I don't hide too many things, and I do like to share a lot of stories, even when you never ask to hear them, right? I mean, you've already heard about my love for the St. Louis Cardinals and the fact that I love the baseball season is back. You've heard about my love for the Green Bay Packers, even though I'm living in Detroit Lions territory. You heard my stories that go back to my days as a classroom teacher, my years as a coach, and of course, you've even he had to hear my stories that involve my family. In fact, like it or not, you probably know more about me than you ever cared or wanted to know, including the fact that when it comes to my appetite, which hasn't gone away, as you can tell, my appetite is still all about meat and potatoes. I am a meat and potatoes kind of guy Sorry to all you vegans out there. That's probably why McDonald's is still my kind of place. In fact, at the risk of repeating some things that I'm pretty sure I have shared before, I wanna once again make sure that I share some interesting facts about McDonald's, this ever popular worldwide restaurant chain. In fact, did I share with you in the past that according to some research back in 2012, there were already at that time 30,000 McDonald's worldwide in 120 countries and that it was estimated at that time that McDonald's served over 62 million customers each and every day that's a lot of customers and have I shared with you that also at that time it was estimated that the food chain was selling about 75 hamburgers per second that's a lot of hamburgers according to this information McDonald's is not only my kind of place it's apparently a lot of folks kind of place Unfortunately, what was also discovered during some of the research that's been done in the past, especially by 
Sponsorship Research International back in the early 2000s is that when shown those golden arches, those arches that are familiar, that represent McDonald's, 88% of the people that were asked could quickly identify them as the McDonald's arches. But only 54% of those people could name the Christian cross. You have to wonder what it is that makes McDonald's so popular. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's still that sauce that they use on that wonderful Big Mac. Uh, or maybe it's those French fries that we haven't even mentioned. Or maybe, just maybe, the attraction has to do with the option that McDonald's began to offer back in the 90s, which is no longer a part of the uh, options, but it's still there, that they now supersize the orders. Well, I don't know if that's really the reason that so many people are attracted to McDonald's, but I do think that we could argue that what Jesus did in our gospel reading for today was supersize a meal like never before. Yeah, today we once again hear how Jesus fed 5,000 men, besides women and children, with only five loaves of bread and two fish. And then afterwards, there were leftovers. Can you believe that? There were leftovers to the amount of 12 baskets full of bread. That's a lot of bread. That's a lot of leftovers. In fact, it's enough to serve as a great reminder to all of us, and even to a well-schooled Jewish man or woman at the time, that bread has been at the heart of so many of the miracles that God has performed throughout history. You see, this was not the first time in the history of God's people where, where bread was at the heart and soul of a miracle and where bread had been used to satisfy the hunger of the people. As you may recall, back in the desert, there was that manna that was used to feed the Israelites as they wandered in the desert every day. Every day, they were given plenty of manna, and every day, there were leftovers. Leftovers of manna, which was not to be gathered and stored up, as was commanded by God, as the people were taught to rely solely on God each and every day for new manna. Then there was a time in the Old Testament when the prophet Elisha fed a hundred men with only 20 loaves of barley bread. You can actually read that for yourself in 2 Kings chapter 4, where we hear that after they ate, they actually had some leftover, leftovers again. And then there was a time that Boaz gave Ruth some bread. Well, more so it was roasted grain, but we'll throw it in the bread category. And Ruth ate all that she wanted. And yes, she too had some left over. That one you can read about in the book of Ruth. Now I realize that when we hear about the miracle of Jesus fighting the uh, feeding the 5,000. Many of us don't necessarily jump to those Old Testament accounts, but it's quite possible that at least some of those in the crowd might have been reminded about things like the manna in the desert, the barley loaves of Elisha, the leftovers after Ruth was fed by Boaz. And even more so, they may have begun to see uh, what we have the privilege of now knowing, that this Jesus, this Jesus was definitely more than just a great prophet, miracle worker, and teacher. No, because with Jesus, so much more than physical hunger is satisfied. And with Jesus, there are leftovers to go around. You see, the disciples, along with the people of their day, they had once again been given this wonderful taste of something more than just earthly bread that satisfies our temporary hunger pains. They were being fed by the bread of life himself, Jesus Christ. And being fed by this life-giving and renewing word was more of a miracle than the earthly bread that left 12 baskets full left over. That's what I find most amazing about the miracles of Jesus. As is the case with his parables and with his teachings, they always point back to the one who grants eternal life. And in this case, the bread that was used to feed those hungry stomachs that day was given by the bread from heaven that also feeds our souls. In fact, this bread feeds us with hope in the midst of despair. This is the bread that feeds you and me with forgiveness in the midst of our sin and our rebellion. This bread feeds us with joy in the midst of grief and sorrow. And this bread, he feeds us with peace in the midst of chaos. Yeah, this bread brings healing to the spiritually sick, compassion to those who are spiritually broken. 
and life to those who are spiritually dead. As we hear again about another miracle that had to do with bread, you and I are once again today pointed back to who it is that is the eternal bread that has come down from heaven for us. And we are pointed to the living bread that offers you and me then a love that brings eternal life in the midst of death and satisfaction for a broken and hungry soul in supersized proportions. In fact, the bread that Jesus is, the bread that Jesus gives is so abundant, so plentiful that there are plenty of leftovers to go around. That's right, more leftovers. We should never forget that. Only now we're not commanded to just leave them or set them aside. We are commanded by the bread of life himself to take these leftovers and to share these leftovers with those who are hungry, those who are craving to be fed. That's why I still wonder. I wonder what the disciples did with all that bread that they collected that day in those 12 baskets. After all, remember, Jews would have most likely connected that bread to the gift from heaven that had been given on so many occasions throughout the history of God's people. But the question is, what do you think? What do you think the disciples did with all that bread that was left over that day? Well, honestly, I think we can answer that one. And I think we can answer it without uncertainty. So I want you to do me a favor. I know this is unique. Uh, I want you to either... Take a few seconds to look at those who are around you, wherever you're at, or think about those who God has placed in your lives, those who live around you. In fact, turn around and look at those who are right there beside you, if you do have somebody there, and, and then think about all of our other brothers and sisters who are worshiping alongside us this morning as we continue this, this celebration of our Lord's resurrection, which is why we worship on Sunday morning. Think about all the other Christians that are in this world. And let me ask again, for those Christians that were past, present, and those in the future, what do you think the disciples did with all the leftovers from Jesus? Well, they did what they were chosen to do. After being fed themselves by Jesus, the one who is the living bread from heaven, after being fed and nourished by the Christ, the one who continues to feed and nourish you and me even today, after being fed and filled by the living bread from heaven who satisfies the hunger of their souls with forgiveness for all those times when they, like us, failed to feed off of his eternal word and truth, they did what they were chosen and what they were called to do as his followers. They took the living bread that they had been granted and they gave it to everyone who hungered, everyone who needed to be fed. Because that's what Christ followers do. We not only revel and celebrate the miracle of Jesus making satisfaction for our souls through the forgiveness that was poured out on the cross of Calvary, but we too take the never ending leftovers and we feed the hungry. And friends, there is no shortage these days of people who need to be fed with the living bread. More than ever, we live in a time and in a place where we're surrounded by starving souls. Souls so hungry that they're trying to feed on earthly bread that will never bring satisfaction and will only cause them to hunger even more. Yeah, that's what people do who have fed on the living bread. That's what we do, it's a part of who we are. We don't store the leftovers, we don't take them and just set them aside, no, we take them to the people and we share them. Because when you yourself have been led to feed on the living bread from heaven, as will be the case once again, as we are here and gather in this place this weekend, his spirit creates in us an ongoing hunger and a desire then to give to others, to share with others what we've been given along with the truth revealed in Jesus' own words. That if anyone, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. If anyone eats of this bread, he'll live forever. That's a promise that's sealed in Jesus' blood. That's a promise for you and for me that includes a hope that goes far beyond this world. And it's a promise that never ends and has no limitations. 
which is why, like those first disciples, we are so blessed to be the ones now who are chosen to bring the bread of life to everyone we meet. We are blessed to be the ones to be moved by the Holy Spirit to make sure that the people of this world, the people in our lives, the people who surround us, people who are filled with all kinds of fears and worries over things like viruses and unrest, that they not only learn to recognize the cross of Jesus for what it is, then they recognize those golden arches, but that they also then learn what the cross of Jesus means for them a supersized portion of God's love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, which all leads to salvation and eternal life. So friends, today, let this be a word of encouragement. As those who continue to have the privilege and the honor to be blessed to feed off the bread of life each and every day, may his Holy Spirit now lead us to go and boldly point to others the bounty of bread that is there for them too. Let's not keep it to ourselves. And may we pray earnestly that Jesus will turn their hunger and our hunger toward things, from things that are worldly to a hunger for that which is truly satisfying and life-giving and eternal. Behold the bread of life. Jesus Christ for you. He's not only here to feed you, but now moves you and me to share with others what we've been given. Let's do it for Christ's sake. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to stand with me. And we will confess our faith today in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. And for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sin, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You certainly can be seated. At this time, we would have an opportunity in our normal worship to offer our tithes and gifts to God in thanksgiving for all that he has offered to us as the bread of life. And again, we have an opportunity to live as his stewards, no matter how much we've been given. It's like that parable of the talents. One was given one, one was given two, another was given five. But they are all entrusted by God. And he has given us all that we have. So my prayer is that you continue to be faithful as his stewards as you return his gifts to him for the work of his church. At this time, we turn to our Lord in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, from you and through you come all things. And you have built your church to serve as a rescue ship rather than as a cruise ship. Grant to each and every one of us, along with your entire church, a bold and courageous faith to go and confess Jesus as Lord and to share the abundant gifts of forgiveness and grace so that those around us may be fed and nourished by the one who is the bread of life. Grant faithfulness, O God, to all pastors, teachers, missionaries, church workers, and the members of this and every congregation, that they may continue to faithfully proclaim the gospel message 
Be also with all our brothers and sisters in the neighboring congregations here in Grand Haven and use all of us together so that we may share the abundance of God's love and saving mercies with those in peril. O oh Lord, watch over and guard this nation and its people. In times of uncertainty, turmoil, and fear, give those in the authority of government wisdom and skill to carry out their duties for the good of all. Be also with those who have answered the call to serve, especially the men and women of the United States Coast Guard. Guide and protect them, Lord, as they fulfill their duties and continue to preserve this great nation. God of grace and mercy, you alone are the great physician of both body and soul, and therefore we ask you to look with compassion on all who are in trouble, distress, or suffering any kind of illness or injury, especially those we've been naming before you this past week and those who we now lift up to you in our hearts. Keep them firm in their faith and their trust in you. Be also with those who grieve over those who have died. Cover them with a special measure of that peace that truly surpasses our own understanding. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the cleansing power of holy baptism. As your children, guide and lead us now with your Holy Spirit that uh, we might live for you and to your glory and that our lives would be a reflection of your love and mercy. As we now have an opportunity this weekend to approach your table at your gracious invitation, to eat and to drink the body and blood of our Savior for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Give us repentant and believing hearts and minds to receive these gifts to your glory and for our salvation. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share those leftovers.